it's been a, an amazing journey and it is funny to just only think it's been like five years and just I've learned, you know, like three different languages. I've been in three different countries. I've, you know, had cancer in the midst of it. Just all these things where I'm just like, man, God, you have really just moved. Before I became a missionary in 2015, I was a physical education teacher in Southern California for 15 years. And so I got on the internet and I just Googled, where do you need Christian missionaries? And team popped up. And I was like, okay, I could do sports ministry. I could do that. And then my missions coach, Tasha Eckenhoff, called me. She had this edge where she just knew exactly what God was calling her towards and was determined to follow that and be obedient. As a missions coach, I get to walk with people through the application process and really journey with them in discerning what God is leading them towards and how he is developing his vision for missions in their life. She was like, okay, we can go to Germany, you can go to Papua New Guinea. And then they're like, oh, you know, what about Chad? And I was like, well, where's that? And they're like, Africa. And I was like, that doesn't sound African. She answered to the opportunity that was listed for Chad to be involved in sports ministry and discipleship work. And so in order to do that, she really needed um, French language because Chad was a former French colony. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna go learn French and go to Africa. Being in Chad, being a female, is, is a little difficult and culturally they don't really accept you. So for a female to just go out and start playing sports, they're not really gonna respect you or listen to you. I think initially when you're in a place that's really hard, you can't, you don't see the bigger picture. God totally changed me or used that situation for me to trust them and rely on him in ways that he had to put me in that place to do that. The whole purpose of this was for discipleship. The idea was to get close to these girls in order to speak into their lives. And that she really shone at. She did well. When my term was over, I was like, I'm not going to be a missionary anymore. I, I was leaving Chad and I wasn't going to go back. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to go back to teaching. This was not for me. So I suggested, why don't we explore other options? And she jumped on that. I thought, let's find a better fit and uh, let's not lose any. We found a new placement for her in Mexico. Through conversations with missionaries there, she discovered that she could use her skills in sports ministry, coaching really, really well in Mexico. I came back from Chad in July of 2018. And three weeks after being home, I got diagnosed with breast cancer. So I was like, gosh, I'm in the application process. Just got diagnosed with cancer. Trying to go to Mexico, <laughs> like, it was just a lot. My involvement with her, with her was just really wanting her to, uh, to take the time that she needed to be healthy. She did the best that she could do in trying to be faithful to what God was putting in front of her on a day-to-day -day basis, which I admire greatly. And so through this whole time, I just had this peace. And so when we found out the cancer was stage one, I met with my oncologist and he was like, oh yeah, we can get you out in eight months. And so in 2020, I was able to finish language school in February, jumped right into it. It was really awesome. And then in March, we're like, cool, we're going to do volleyball. We started doing that and then COVID hit and it kind of just put everything to a halt. As terrible as COVID has been and limited our ministry, I feel like I have developed a better relationship with our older kids from this because it's more intimate. We're in smaller groups. We want to be in control. We want immediate results. We want all these things, but it's like, can you be patient? and just trust God with the process. You know, it's just changing your perspective and all these little things that God has laid before you and had to humble you on. But I just look back and I'm just like, wow. It's hard to believe. Cause people are like, you lived in Africa? I'm like, yeah. They're like, you lived in Mexico? I'm like, yeah. You learned Arabic? Yeah. I'm like, I know, it's crazy, it's all crazy.